In today's video, we're going to be going over the refraction of light. And to do that, we're going to be using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations. Their website has a bunch of really good simulations for math and sciences. If you're looking for the link to their website, it is in the description below. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe, click the notifications bell, give it a thumbs up, leave us a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials that you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. And of course, the link to that is also in the description below. And let's get started with refraction of light. Now, what is refraction? Here's a quick definition. Refraction is the bending of light when it enters a material where it will be traveling at a different speed. So here we have a diagram. You can think of this as air and water. Uh, water is more dense than air. So when light, this incoming light ray, this incident ray, crosses this boundary, this interface between these two different materials, it's going to be bent, and it's going to be bent because it's going to be traveling slower in this material, and it bends towards the normal line. Okay, in the simulation, we're going to be going over the three different cases that we can have for refraction. But before we do that, let's go over the terms that you should be familiar with. This incoming ray is called the incident ray. It doesn't matter whether it's coming in from above or in from below. All we know is that it's the incident ray because that ray is coming in like that. The angle that that incident ray makes with the normal line is called the angle of incidence. The normal line is an imaginary line that is perpendicular to the surface, and we draw it where the incident ray strikes that boundary between those two materials. The angle of incidence is the angle between the normal line and the incident ray. It is not the angle between the boundary of the two materials and the incident ray. It is always the normal line and the ray. So here we have our incident ray. We have our angle of incidence, which I designated alpha. We have the normal line, and this is the boundary between these two materials. N1 and N2 are the indices or the index of refraction of each of those two materials. If you don't know what the index of refraction is, then you can link to a video I made in the upper right-hand corner of this video that will explain everything you need to know about the index of refraction. Now, once that in incident ray crosses that boundary, then it becomes the refracted ray. So this ray is the refracted ray, and the angle between the normal line and the refracted ray is the angle of refraction, which I have designated here as beta. Okay, so you should be familiar with all of those terms as we go through refraction using the simulation from PHT Interactive Simulations, which we're going to go to that right now. So the simulation is entitled Bending of Light. It has three different windows. There's the intro window, there is the prisms window, and there is the more tools window. For this video, we're going to be using the more tools video uh, window. And you can click the reset button here to make sure everything is reset. You can turn the laser light on like that, and you can change the angle that that ray makes with the normal line, this being the normal line right here. You can change the wavelength or the color of the light. You can make the light uh, appear as a wave or as a ray. You can use the protractor to measure the angles. You can use the intensity meter to measure the brightness of the light. You can measure the speed with the speedometer, and you can see the waveform of the light using the waveform meter, which you can place on there just like that. Now, you can turn the normal line on and off. You can actually show the angles with the numerical values like that. You can do the same thing, of course, with the protractor. If you put the protractor on there like that, you'll also get 40 degrees. We're going to leave the angles on like that. And over here, we can change the index of refraction for each material. If you click on this drop-down menu, you can make it air, water, glass. There's two different mist materials or custom. We'll talk about the mist materials towards the end of the video. And you can change the index of refraction of this material. You can also change it, of course, with the arrows by clicking on that. And you can use the slider to drag and make the changes like that. All right, so this is material one. We're calling the top. This is material two. We're calling the bottom. I'm just going to click reset. I am going to turn my laser on, and we are going to first, in the first case, we're going to have the angle of refraction, excuse me, we're going to have the index of refraction of both materials, number one and number two, the same. It doesn't matter what the same they are. I'm just going to set them both as water. So we have water on the top and water on the bottom, 
and I'm going to turn the angles on and you can see when the index of refraction of the top material and the index of refraction of the bottom material, in this case they're both 1.33, when those are the same, then the angle of incidence will be equal to the angle of refraction and there is no refraction or there is no bending of the light because the material is going to have the, the light is going to have the same speed in both materials. Okay, so that's case number one where the index of refraction of number one is equal to the index of refraction of number two. Now, the second case is where the bottom material number two has a greater index of refraction than material number one. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this light, I'm just going to drag it all the way over here to 1.6. So now the bottom material, the index of refraction is 1.6, the top material is 1.3, the bottom material has a greater index of refraction, and therefore the light ray bends towards the normal line, and the angle of refraction is going to be less than the angle of incidence. So this line, this ray, will bend towards the normal line, and as a result, the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence. The angle of refraction will always be less than the angle of incidence when the material that the light is traveling to, okay, after it crosses the boundary, has a greater index of refraction. So in this case, we would say N2 is greater than N1. The index of refraction of material number two is greater than the uh, index of refraction of material number one. Okay? So the first case we had where they had the same index of refraction, this is number two, the index of refraction of the bottom material is greater, and of course, now we can make the index of refraction of the bottom material less. So now we have 1.33 on the top, and we can set this to maybe 1.1, like that. And you can see now the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. That's because when the index of, material, uh, index of refraction for the bottom material is less than the index of refraction for the top material, the light ray will bend away from the normal line. This is the angle of refraction, and the angle of refraction is now greater than the angle of incidence, like that. Okay, so those are the three cases. The indices of refraction are the same, the bottom material can have a greater index of refraction, and the bottom material can have a lower index of refraction. Now, I just want to point something out. There is this reflected ray. This is the incident ray. This is the refracted ray. Now, even though these two materials, okay, like one of them is not a mirror, but at, when the light strikes that boundary, some of the light is still going to be ref reflected off that boundary. And you can see, of course, that the angles for re the reflection, the incident angle and the reflected angle, those two are always equal to each other. Okay, that's another video, but I just want to point that out because students often have a question about what is this ray up here. All right, so now we can go back to our presentation and we can summarize what we just saw in the simulation. So in the first case, case number one, the two, in, the two materials have the same index of refraction. They could be the same material or could be different materials that have the same index of refraction. But when that occurs, that light ray crosses that boundary, it is not bent, and therefore the angle of refraction is equal to the angle of incidence. And the reason that the angle of refraction is equal to the angle of incidence is that the velocity of the light, the velocity of this ray through this material is going to be equal to the velocity of light through this material, and there's no refraction. That's case number one. Case number two, we said, if in the previous case, the light would travel straight across. But in this case, we're going to say that N2, the bottom material, has a greater index of refraction. And therefore, when the bottom material has a greater index of refraction, the light is bent, it's bent towards the normal line, and the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. That's because the velocity of light in material number two, the bottom material, is less than the velocity of the light in the top material. The light, as it crosses this boundary, is going to slow down, and I kind of think of it slowing down, and the ray just kind of falls towards the normal line. Okay, and we would say that the light bends or the ray bends towards the normal line. That's case number two. Now, case number three, of course, is the case where if the light was to go straight across, the indices of refraction would be the same. But in this case, we're going to say that the index of refraction of the bottom material is less. And when the index of refraction of the bottom material is less, then the light, way, the light ray bends away from the normal line. 
And when the light ray bends away from the normal line, then the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence. And the reason that that occurs is because the speed of the light in the bottom material, the velocity of light in material number two, is greater than the velocity of light in material number one. And the light ray bends away from the normal line. Okay? So those are really the only three cases. The materials have the same index of refraction. The bottom material is greater or the bottom material has a um, lower index of refraction. Okay? Now, I mentioned the mystery materials. And what we're going to do with the mystery materials is we're going to figure out the index of refraction for one of the mystery materials. And there's two different ways that we can do that. And this is one of the ways we can do that. We can take the sine of each of the angles. So we're going to go back to the simulation. Okay, and you can see I have here water. I'm going to switch this to air. It doesn't really matter what material you use. And I'm going to switch this to Mr. Mitchell A. I'm going to set this angle at 50 degrees. It doesn't matter what angle you use, as long as you have two pairs of angles. And let's see if I can get this right at 50, like that. So if I have air on the top, I have mystery material A. I don't know what material it is, so I don't know what its index of refraction is. N is the index of refraction. But we can you calculate it using the, equi the equ equation I just showed you. Here, the angle of incidence is 50 degrees, and the angle of refraction is 18.5 degrees. All you need is one pair of angles. You can use any pair of angles. We're going to use these two. And so now we're going to go back to our presentation. And you can see that this is the diagram we had. 50 degrees the angle of incidence, the re reflect, reflected angle, refracted angle is 18.5. And therefore, if we can just plug those in, the sine of 50 divided by the sine of 18.5, and you divide those two, and you get 2.41. That means that the bottom material, okay, that mystery material A has an index of refraction of 2.41. Okay, now there's another way we can do that, and we can do that with this equation. It says that the index of refraction is the speed of light. C is the speed of light divided by the velocity of the uh, light in that material. So we can go back to our simulation, and we can measure the speed of light in this material right here because we want to know the, the index of refraction for N. That's this material at the bottom. And the way they show the speed of light, they don't give you like the absolute number. They show you it's 0.41 of C. C being the speed of light in a vacuum, 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. All right. So we know it's 41% or 0.41 times C is the speed of light. You can see this is air. The speed of light in air is basically the speed of light. It's 1 times 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Okay. So, but down here, it's 0 0.41. So we can go back to our presentation, and we can calculate the uh, index of refraction. Here's the diagram we had. We have the speed of light being 0 0.41 C, which means 0 0.41 times C. Okay, and we know that C is, a, is kind of a constant, 3.0 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That's from like the equation E equals M c squared, Einstein's equation, but we don't know the velocity. We know it's 41% of c, so we could put that down here, but I'm going to calculate it separately here. So the velocity is 0 0.41 times 3.0 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. If you do that, you get about 1.23 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. You can see it's slower down here. And I can place that value there, and I get the same number, basically 2.44. The previous answer we had was 2.41, but for rounding errors, those numbers are basically the same. Okay, so there you go. That is an introduction to refraction using one of the excellent simulations from PHET Interactive Simulations. I went over all three cases for uh, refraction, and then we used the simulation also to determine the index of refraction of the mystery material A, and if you wanted to do mystery material B, you could do it the same way. Okay, so thank you so much for watching. hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Please subscribe and support our channel, Step by Step Science. Please subscribe. Click the notifications bell so you don't miss anything. Let's see. Give us a thumbs up. Leave us a nice positive comment. And don't forget to share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.